where they are maltreated, being malhandled, anywhere they are being manipulated, anywhere they are being tortured by the evil forces in healing and open places. Father, I ask you to move around and deliver your people in Jesus' name. I ask you to break the yoke of ancestral curses, ancestral spells that is cast over your people. I am here again to set them free from such things they don't know, from those nemesis caused by our forefathers, that these things shall not continue to be fighting against your people, the progress of your people, the success of your people. Father, I stand here with authority and build on me. In Luke chapter 10, 19, you say you have given us power and authority to trample down serpents and scorpions, and nothing can hurt us by enemies. Father, I am here to break that yoke that has been holding your people all over the world. African voodoo, some kind of witchcraft, both white and black witchcraft, Kuvuns and kingdoms that are rising and raising their ugly heads against the progress of your people. I stand against it. So many people are suffering in foreign lands, manipulated within the homeland. Then I stand against that barrage of forces that is against your people. Distance can never be a barrier. I stand against them. I fight against them. I break every yoke, every cost, every spell that is cast over your people, wherever they are, in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand here in the name of Jesus Christ. In the midst of evil concoction and manipulation, I stand here with authority invested on me. As Christ says, anything we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Anything we bound in we're unbound here is unbound in heaven. So I stand here to bind these powers that have been harassing the people of God. I stand here to bind the powers that have been dealing with them. I stand here to unbind those who are bound by these powers. With the authority invested on me as a priest and servant of God, I stand to release those in bondage. All the places who have gathered all this, Father, I ask you for total liberation in Jesus' name. I ask you for freedom in Jesus' name. I ask you for liberation in Jesus' name. May your people be freed. May they be delivered in the name of Jesus. I cover them wherever. The diaspora at home, in various businesses, various courts, various offices, where they are. Father, I ask for liberation. I ask for freedom. I ask for untying the tie. They are tied head to toe like Lazarus. But I stand here in your voice to echo and command with authority. Untie them and let them go. Untie them and let them go. Untie them and let them go. In the name of Jesus. And so may God, as I explain all these things, begin to release you, free you from every chain, from every oppression, from every wickedness, from every principality and power. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I want to tell you that today we have assembled once more to give God glory and not to the created and not to man made. Amen. A song says, I never worship man made God. Man -made. I never worship man made God. I never worship my made God. 
Mamma, I never watch a mamma God. I say, Mamma God, Mamma God, Mamma God. I say, Mamma God, Mamma. I never watch him. I never watch him. Mamma God. Amen. So, my name is Reverend Father. Associate Professor Paul Martin Obinobai. I am a priest of Nsoka Diocese in Enugu State, Nigeria, and Nsoka, Nsoka Diocese, Enugu State, Nigeria, West Africa, Africa, and the world. So, I am here today. I am here to expose the vanity of serving all these idols. One, one may wonder how and why and how, where all these things came from. Or you might think it is just um, something made of a night or something we just cooked up. If you watch the faces of all these things, you discover that they, they are not uh, a manufactured story. These are real stories. And it is I who witnessed all these things. Just like St. Paul would say, I witnessed all these things. Um, yesterday, being 12th of August 2020, I celebrated my 20 years old in priesthood. 20 years old in priesthood. 20 years old in priesthood. It's not a 20 day walk. So, this collation, accumulation, collection is 20 years activity. And good enough, thank you to God, the one I carried in 2000, the one, one of the idols I carried in 2000 is in this room. Coincidentally, it is in this room because there are other ones in the other rooms. So, and that one is that. Come close and see, this one was taken in the year, in the year 2000. This was taken in the year 2000, and this is called and that the ledger. And that the ledger. I took it around 12 a.m. in the evening with my car. Went to the shrine and took it. I know they might have, because there are still adorers of it. I know they might have replaced new one, but this is the old one. This is, this is the main one. This is and that the ledger. I don't know what, what is it? You see, and so on. This was taken the year 2000. The year 2000, around December 2000. This is a, a very delicate, dangerous type of idol that people run away from it. But I have to, God has to humiliate it. What again, when you see why I told you what I'm doing that it is not just to do anything magical, nothing magical, nothing is concocted, nothing is cooked up. This is a real encounter, a real encounter. For instance, I took this one from, um, uh, I took this one from um, Obuja, that place where water used to kill people. In this, in this village, there is a stream that used to kill people. If you go to the stream and fetch water, that, that, that stream, the, the water will not come out of the bucket. And if, it, if the water touches you, you will be in trouble. Then I went and blessed it. This was around 2004, five. Yeah. So 2004, five. Uh, I went and prayed over the water, and it was a healing water. I just prayed over the salt, like I lighted it, and the lighted light it. Light I prayed over the salt and put it at the head of the stream, and immediately it became a healing source and power. Followed it, and thousands of people were gathering and going to the place. It was due to ignorance of the people that they drove us out there. Say well. We, we, we have no choice than to leave. So, 
in the same city, I took this very, very, very date, yeah? I don't know what it name is, say, But this thing, the day I took it, was in the village square. This thing was, smoke was pouring out of this very, very, very thin. Smoke was coming out of it. But I didn't care. It's smoke, but I'm fire. So, no fear. Fire does not fear smoke. And if you are fire, we mix up. Fire does not burn fire. Amen. So I just grabbed it and said, whether you are smoking, if whatever it is, you will be quarantined in the boot of my car. Put it with them. It stops too much smoking. He knew that I was serious and I was ready to imprison it. So it took flight. So some people carried their own and went and hid it in the bush when they saw that I took this one. One man hid his own under his bed. And when I left, something happened to him. In the midnight, something would come out under the bed and try to strangle, strangle the man. He did it for seven days. The man rushed to my parish and said, Father, please let me confess. I said, what are you confessing? Where are you from? What is it? He said, truly the day you took that one that smokes in the village, I went and hid my own under my bed so that we would not lay hands on it. And unfortunately for me, Behold, <laughs> since that day I never rested. An old man usually comes out on, 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 under my bed to strangulate me. I will keep on struggling until I fell on the ground. I say, well, sorry, go ahead with it. Uh, you have already hidden it, I can't come. He say, please, Father, if you don't come and I die, you killed me. I say, you don't know who killed you. Anyway, what is your heart? We followed and went. He couldn't even bring it out. He said, under the bed. I went under the bed and brought it out. From that day, he started sleeping. All that went and hid their own in the bush. I said, where is it? Where are those idols? They said, no, we don't have anything. I said, okay, whether I have anything or not, wherever you have hidden anything, it will be useless from now. Do you know one day, <laughs> as I left, those things they hid in the bush. We are eating up. These idols, they went ahead in the bush. We are eating up by rats. A rat pounced on them. When they got there, it was a war of rat. They shouted, Oh, Okunirere has indirectly taken our idols with the rats. <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know what it means. I don't know what happened. Our rat found whether this thing became crayfish. I don't know. Yeah, so that I believe in the power of the world, the efficacy of the world. Elijah, when Elisha, when he was going home, about 42 children came around and said, Elijah, bad head, Elijah, they were abusing him, and all of a sudden, he, carelessly, he just said, hey, get out, all of you kids, get out, you lion push you, the lion kill you. He, he was just saying that to scare them away. He didn't know he has vomited lion. Just to step ahead, he saw lions pouncing on the 42 children, took them for pepper soup. So there is power in the world. So as I'm talking right now, you are being liberated in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, distance is not a barrier to Jesus Christ. I keep repeating it. As you are listening to me, as you are hearing what I'm saying, you are being liberated. Look at it now. So if you are smoked anywhere, if you are pumped anywhere, if you are jacked anywhere, like this one, you are unsmoked and the smoke around the quenches. Look at it now. This one, I took it from OP side. This is a bunch of key. People are locked. You could be one of these people locked here. Look at it. Is this forged? These are years under a shrine. And no, thing, no progress was there until I went there and evacuated all these keys. Poured holy water on them prayed for liberation, and behold, go there now, you see springing up houses off stage and people marrying, young boys going to school, having graduates, and all that progress everywhere. And they never knew they were locking themselves up. Look at it. Anywhere they locked you, I unlock you. I unlock you. I unlock you in the name of Jesus Christ. I break every chain around you. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 to 19 says, Those in bondage shall be freed. 
I free you right now in Jesus' name. I liberate you from all this chain down, from all this pin down in the name of Jesus. I set you free. Anywhere they have pinned you with six inches, anywhere they have pinned you with nails, with javelin, this kind of thing, with anything, be it tie tie, be it chains around you, I unchain you in Jesus' name. Like Paul and Silas, who were in the room, thunder came and scattered the door. The same hour I scatter with thunder and fire. Anything that have pinned you, chained you around. If you any of these keys, look at it. Hundreds of keys here, locking the stars, the destinies of people. No matter your country, you could have had this kind of thing without knowing it. So, as I'm releasing these people, so I am releasing you in any part of Africa, part of America, Western world, Europe, and all that. No matter where you are, India, Malaysia, China, I am releasing you. What a part of the world you are, I am releasing you from chains, from oppression, from wicked world, from their covens, from their kingdoms, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be freed. No great. This kind of thing, I broke the other one the other day. Look, this thing, they, can, they brought the sand from the footstep and put it here and tie it. You see, now, let us see. You can see. All these things, they are not for them. Do we have, do we have a razor? I forgot my razor. Alright, I break it. Okay. Fake razor from car. I will break it later so that you see what is locked here. Could be your star. But I'm going to release you. As I do this thing here in Africa, so it is touching everybody else, both local and international. And you are being released. Say, I claim it. Now, look now. This thing is what, what they call the Kenga. In Psalm 115, verse 15, you see, 115, verse 15, 8 to 15, it says, those who move this thing are going to be like this thing forever. In heaven, this kind of thing cannot find a place. But this is what you are transmogrifying yourself into. Look at it. It's going to be like a king on the last day. You don't want to set yourself free? Set yourself free from this thing. This is how you're going to look like. If not like the other one. So, let me, this one. You see? You see, this kind of thing, do you know this thing? I took this thing from Obolafo. You see, this is 200 years old. About four pastors went and took it. And when they got home, this team mysteriously went back to his former position. This team you're seeing this thing. Went back to his former position. Four pastors, they were confessing and testifying. They were afraid that, <laughs> that I would be their last resort. I never knew what happened anyway. They didn't tell me. But all I know, I was doing my job. I just went there. It was after I had taken it home that they began to celebrate. They killed four cows in, <laughs> in jubilation because they never rejoiced. They believed that it would still come back as usual. So after the whole day, they never came back. They went and killed four cows. 
and celebrated it. That, it is only then they began to tell me that four pastors had taken this home and it returned. Do you know what happened the day I took it? It was wrapped with four water plumes. And then I did what? I untied it. On removing the fourth water plumes, which had been there for years, I found a single bee, bee, that one that produces honey. And it was flying towards me to sting me. I said, you'll be stopped there. If you don't touch me with your, your sting, I will deal with you and I'll set you on fire. As if he had it, which I knew he had it. I said, turn back and leave. And the team turned back and flew away. From I was in a room on tiny. He flew away through the window. And I was never seen till today. And since 2005, this thing has been here. This is 2005. Taken from Obolafo, uh, Ahul Obolafo. Yeah, the man, I don't remember. It's about how many years now? This is 2020, 2025. That's about 15 years ago, am I right? Sure. So since 15 years ago, this thing has been here in prison for 15 years in prison, man. And continues to be like that. So if this kind of thing attacks you, it was killing them. Because it's no longer this thing you see here, but the demon has taken over. The fallen demons have taken over. That's why it is wrong to worship devil. You wouldn't know which one is in operation. You call it your forefathers, your this, your that, your that, and it's rejoicing, hiding behind as your forefather dealing with you. You better reject them. See, it. Right, take, take. Whoop, 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 whoop. This is what they were doing. And they were joking with it before until they begin to place charm on it. And the charm attracted demons and started killing them. So be careful with what you use what you think is a god but that godness demonic is a small god not big god so don't worship this don't worship this if you have here lesson It's 200 years, 200 years now, old, 200 years old. All the things they do is to chain you. All this talisman. They invoke you with it, they are not real. Sometimes they can call you, you see, sometimes they can call you with phone. There's one phone here. They invoke you. This rosary is no longer rosary. The rosary is no longer rosary. It's demonized rosary. This is why it is said, not all that glitter is gold. When you see this, you think it is rosary now. It's not chocolate. It's gone out. It's just like I can show you several pictures. You saw in the other day on the other day internet. I was entering a house and looked up. to protect the house instead of Jesus Christ you see. So there are so many caution these days. There are so many syncretism these days. Look at that. Uh, when you see this person clad in this thing. Uh, a phone with this, you, you just do sign of the cross. You don't know. It's not bad of it. And sometimes they can invoke you through the phone, but you as a child of God has nothing to do with that. Nobody can harm you, directly or indirectly, far or near. 
that was a time that was challenging me. Why did I expose them in the book I wrote on occultism? He went to the printer and challenged him. And the printer was afraid, told me this man is saying he's, he's pointing a threat to him. I say, who that person is? Give him my number. Let him call me directly. I am the one that confused it. I wrote the book, not you. You are simply a printer. You are looking for your money. But I worked on it, following the directives of the Holy Spirit. Let me see if the Spirit is wrong. Give him my phone number. That made me, I went and put my phone number in that book so that he could call me. If he had ventured and called me and spoke nonsense, I would have spit fire, spat fire into his ears and he wouldn't hear anymore. You know, there is power in the world. St. Augustine confessed his sins. St. Augustine confessed his sin, belonging to Manichaean secret court. He was a war-done man. He was a warlord, so, uh, you know, concupiscence of his was so uncontrollable. So let us know that God is not interested in the death of a bad person, but that he should and live a better life. Don't deceive yourself. Keep on deceiving yourself. Look, all these tie down, all these things, they are not for good. In the night, they can use this thing and shoot you. They can shoot you with this thing. You are doomed. And they don't shoot you directly. They shoot it on the shrine. Down. You hear the sound. In the night, you begin to run around in the dream. And if they get you this, that is cancer. They shoot you, it is cancer. If you are wise, you stand up immediately and pray, anoint that place with oil, anoint it, and pray, constantly. Use our prayer, thunder and fire, and counteract the dream you saw. If you ate something in the dream, it's not normal. They bring about a kind of sickness that cannot be found in the laboratory. If you have cobwebs all the time, it is bewitchment. Bad luck. They are blocking something we wouldn't know. So always do sign of the cross or anoint yourself or say a chaplatory prayer at that moment for cancellation. In the other aspect, if you are having sex in the dream, it is the worst oppression. Sex in the dream is you already redirect bewitchment. It will scatter any plan you have from tomorrow. So don't. If you have it, kneel down, counteract it. And the way they come is through masturbation and pornography. So withdraw from other things. Pornography and masturbation. Withdraw from them and they, will, they can hardly get it. Those pornography, those pictures, nudie pictures, you see, they are demon projected. As you are watching, you are being initiated without the knowledge of it. So if you're wise, you listen to me and be careful. See? So God does not want you to die and lose heaven. God loves you. And I continue to speak. God loves you. All these things I'm talking about here, they are just done to destroy and not for your good. John 10, 10, the enemy came to steal and destroy, but I came to give you life and life in abundance. If you have here, you listen to me. Look at it now. These things, they are invoked into it. See? They are invoked. They call your name and pour your name there. But all the people who are invoked into these bottles, I release you in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name. That all the manipulation, incantation, invocation done in this are canceled in Jesus' name. I seal you in the blood of Jesus. Be released. This is the evil cup with which they drink in the evil kingdom. And this is in Piato, Buffalo, 
harm. They use it to make dangerous chance. They say at times you put it, you drink something and neutralize this poison. But all these things are, if you believe in God, look at them. Right? And their major cup is this. The spirit drink with three cups at a time. I don't know whether they are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They can't, they can only try, but they cannot be cheap. Look, all this thing we talk, we are sure of what we're saying and asking you that the good Lord who teaches all these things will deliver you. Look at him. All these lions, they will always say, if you go to them, they will just mesmerize you. <laughs> and, and they will take all your money. They will deceive you. Don't be deceived. Look at how they punch on this man. Look at it. Then they have all kinds of plans. When you move, you can see. can beat it and somebody will take try in it. See, see the artistic job, but this one, you don't sound it unless somebody is dead and somebody who has cut off somebody's head. That's why the human here there, you will use it only those who, who have killed somebody and they will put their hands like this, meaning completed. So be careful. You see it? Look at where the berry is. The, when you find yourself in this, if you are a man, they will invoke man. If you are a woman, they will invoke woman here. This is a woman. They will invoke the woman and you will be in the coffin. If you see yourself fighting to fall into a pit or fall into a coffin, it is spirit of death. And those of you who are harassed by spirit of death, I am releasing you today in Jesus' name. Those who have contacted poison through eating in the dream, I cancel that and neutralize it in Jesus' name because it is written in Mark chapter 16, 16 to 17 that will drink poison and nothing will hurt you. And those of you who are contacting kind of diseases in the spiritual through sexual contact, I stand here to neutralize it in the name of Jesus. Any power they project against you, spirit of death, Psalm 118 verse 17 says, You shall not die, you shall live. 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 Amen. God says you will live, and nobody can doubt it. And when God says you will live, you will live. Say, I shall live. Tell your neighbor, you will live. And so it shall be in Jesus' name. Anybody invoked into this shrine or these coffins, caskets, I cancel it in Jesus' name. All these people there, they are human beings. They use it to invoke you and call your name, call your business, and cage you and lock you up. This is a complete coffin. I got it from a shrine. So I'm telling you, my dear brothers and sisters, these are fetishes. You invoke the spirit and they come into it. These things are not life. 
they are lifeless. But if you allow them, oh, sorry. At this point, I will say that those who have ears must have heard us. And let God, good God, teach you a lesson. All those, if you see this kind of thing in the dream, they use it and pierce you and the heart. And they will open it and take your heart. This thing, you see small like this, has killed. Don't give in to that. Some people are in secret societies of all kinds, which I read out the other day. There are so many secret societies in the world. They make you confused about God. They make you not worship the living God. And when you are diverted, attention diverted, when you die in the next world, you will be diverted. You are seeing heaven, but you see yourself dating towards hell. You'll be querying yourself, asking what is happening. What is happening is happening. It started happening here. So I want you to desist from all these things. They are not for your good. They are not for your blessing. They are not for bless you. They are meant to kill. These are the books of occult kingdom. You see? There are some people whose names are written in this book of death. But I am canceling your name that is written in this book of death. This is book of death from one secret cult group. Your name written in book of death is canceled in Jesus' name. Matthew 15, 13 says, Any tree not sown by my father must be uprooted. I uproot whatever they have sown in your life that is not progressive. I uproot whatever they have sown in your life that is deteriorating you, destroying you, destroying your future, destroying your plan, destroying your business, destroying your family. They are invoking you, monitoring you from distance you don't know. Because they have written your name and placed it on their evil altar. Later, you Google our book and then go to the evil altar section book and read it and pray it. Evil altar. The other day, I prayed on the altar of God to counteract the names of those who are taken to evil altars. Any name, any power, any sickness projected from their kingdom at this very hour, I counteract it in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10, 19, he says, I've given you power and authority to trample down serpents and scorpions and nothing can hurt you by enemies. So nothing can hurt you. Say, I claim it. Say, I claim it. Your book, your name will be in the book of life, not book of death. This is book of death. And I cancel your name from today. Any shrine they have taken you in any part of Africa, in any part of America, in any part of Western world, any part in the world, known and unknown, in, under the earth. Because Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, look, all authorities in heaven, on earth, under the earth have been given to me. Now take it. To whom has it mandated? We. So I'm telling you, we are mandated and you are being delivered. You are being set free, as I'm talking right now. Because word is power. There is power in the world. I told you how I fought with the occult kingdom when I got to crusade in Ghana. The girl came to me face to face. That's where I know that there are monitoring spirits. They record your name and take it to their meetings. And you are there wasting your time. They block you left, right, and center. But here, I am unblocking you. I am unblocking you. I am unblocking you in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. So all that areas where they have put your name in their evil altar, I am releasing you and freeing you. Anywhere they have stunted you, you. Anywhere they have hooked you to the marine woman, to the marine sea, look at it. Half of it is sea, is fish. The woman is dead. So not you. The, the man who was using this thing is dead. Of not the charm he put in it. 
He is dead. This man is dead. Where did he leave this thing to? Why wouldn't this thing defend him? So, if you are wise, call yourself to order and start believing God. If you look at other people who claim God, there are times in the past when you see different kinds of people. Who is this one? Sat Guru Maharaj Chichichi. Yeah, that's one. That's this one. This one is a Nevena with three heads. And this is the head of the native doctors all over. And at a suke here. So you can see when they use this thing. When they use it on you, you are a finished person. So I use it on them. Those you want to pin, I pin you. Those who fight against you, you fight against them. Look at what you're going to look like. All these things, you're going to look like them. If you don't want to look that, like them, you begin now to fight for yourself and save yourself. Okay? So, at this point in time, I think, if you have any question to ask, you can drop it there. And then we will need to talk. But I want to tell you that as I'm exposing all this thing, it's just in your interest and for your own good, so that you don't be deluded or deceived or just unnecessarily marched into an end, a labyrinth where you cannot escape. You have a world of escape, and Jesus is your escape route. If you have ears, listen to me. Listen to me. And listen to me. In Jesus' name. Um, remember our book on idol and on poison and on charm. Prayer 17 and prayer uh, uh, 67 also. You find all these prayers here. Uh, use it there and pray on them and believe that God is doing something great in your life. On Tuesday, I am going to talk more on prayers, how to pray. You understand? I am going to talk on how to pray. And I also use that opportunity to explain about witchcraft. Something about witchcraft. I will explain something about witchcraft. You understand? I will talk something about witchcraft on Tuesday, 8 p.m. in Nigerian time. And on Sunday, coming Sunday, by 6.30 p.m., I will celebrate Mass on your behalf to pray for you universally. Asking the good Lord to bless you from the altar of God. And every Thursday like this, when you have the opportunity, we are not in Kumbad, we will always tell you little more stories about demons and devils and all witches and all that. And asking you to not to be afraid, but know that you have the power above them, that they can do you nothing, practically nothing. So at this point in time, I think I'll stop. Some people are pinned down. I'm talking one. Another is coming. If they pin this thing, boom, you don't move anywhere. They pin you. Air force are pinned. Your business are pinned. But I unpin you today in Jesus' name. I unpin you today in Jesus' name. I pin it out from the hideout. Any part of the country that have pinned you as I'm pulling this thing, so I am pulling it away in Jesus' name. And I took it to them in Jesus' name. Be free. Now, pray with me. Mm. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. Free also, Lord, from known and unknown fights. Arise, O Lord, and scatter the frontiers of our enemies. Lord, break the yoke and cord, transfer, cast over us from all this ancestral worship. From the ones we bring upon ourselves, the charms, the deities we create in the village squares, in our private homes, in our private businesses and life, where we consult and contact the demons, demon world to enrich us. Let us know that 
the demons are not our friends, they are unfriendly. And as I'm talking right now, they will be set on fire. Any manipulation anywhere, try and see that you are no longer comfortable. And this fire will move towards you and destroy. If you don't take time, if you don't repent, you will receive fire for fire. And it is our of liberation of people of God, wherever they are, anywhere that is a torture in your life as a result of all this concoction, medicine, deities of all kinds. Father, at this hour, I set your people free in the name of Jesus. I set them free in the name of Jesus. I set them free in the name of Jesus. Be free, be free, be free through Christ our Lord. And so, I'm, I'm going to tell you also about the numbers, the wear of scammers. Too many of them are on board. I'll call my number again so that you don't make the mistake. And also the PA number. Yeah. <clears throat> so, my number is 08035 I come zero eight zero three five nine zero six six. That is double six four zero. Uh, the WhatsApp number we have zero eight one six six zero eight one seven nine zero eight one six six zero eight five. 179 WhatsApp number. Then, in case you couldn't get me because of busyness, you can call my B PA 080-32-898-135. I come again. 080-32-898-135. One three five. So, if you are deceived, you gave in yourself for deception, not to me and not through us. For there are so many people who are blocking here and there. So, I would want you to know that the devil is roaring, prowling loud like a roaring lion, waiting and looking for whom to devour. We also have our account for those of you who. Say they want to partner with us. Anybody giving you, asking you to come to motherless baby, to fatherless baby, to brother home or sister home, we are not part of it. So we don't do that. We don't ask that. We only put in all these things for to help you not to be scammed. For every day, every day we get the stories of it, and uh, they they keep on popping up their heads here and there. Uh, I don't know. Of course, some people have made up their mind to go to hell, of course. And uh, we're not going to help you if you don't want to help yourself. God created you and cannot save you. Created you without your excuse or contribution. But God cannot save you without saying, God save me. Ah, no. You must say, save me. You must show it is important to you. Otherwise, he would have saved Peter for, from drowning. But he kept quiet until Peter shouted, Lord, save me. And then he stretched his hand and delivered him. Romans 10, 13 says, all who call on him shall be delivered. So, as long as you incline on evil, you have no time to call Jesus. Then you remain in your state of uh, perdition. And uh, there's no mercy. You perish. So, let God deliver you and help you to make a pronunciation. I remember the days of uh, Emmanuel Kant and um, um, Heidegger, especially Heidegger. He went around and preached in universities and everywhere that God does not exist. But when one day, as a member of the ruling uh, council, he saw the secret plot of uh, uh, Hitler and he shouted, Wow! Only God can save us! And people were uh, kind of uh, confused and uh, shocked. I asked him, what, which kind of God? But you go about preaching about God, which God again? <laughs> he said, well, <laughs> he cannot be shout God because only God can deliver us from the plan of Hitler. You see, then before this man died, he said he should, a priest should be called for him to go for confession. 
and he went for contrition. And I'm sure God must have forgiven him, despite the fact that he wrote several books that God does not exist, which many court people are using today, that God does not exist. They prove it with all kinds of theories. But when truth comes, you cannot but shout like Heidegger, wow, only God can deliver us. Time is coming. So do it now when you are conscious and able, than the time you will be compared. A word is enough for the world. Hear me? I have peace in your mind. Peace be with you. See you next Thursday. May Almighty God, His infinite mercy, bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.